I have covered Special Agent Oso. They created sentient teddy bears to do their bidding. And Higglytown Heroes, how does giving birth work? But for whatever reason, this is the video where I fear I may have gone too far. Do a video telling yourself, I'm you. Butt lovers. I've been in the hills feeling like a pop star. What I'm saying is I look like Post Malone. <laughs> Welcome back to the lore series where we explore shows and commercials that one time that no one else is brave enough to. Explicitly spelling out the demographic of this video right at the start. Hello, I'm Athena P. I look way too deep into kid shows for the purpose of entertainment and nostalgia for an older audience. So while I'm covering Word World today, the demographic of Word World is very different than the demographic for this video. Awesome. You can't get mad at me now. The PBS kids show Word World ran from 2007 to 2011, with three seasons and 45 episodes overall. It's also a three-time Emmy winner, and features the vocal talent of Veronica Taylor, aka the first English voice actor for Ash Ketchum. What a flex! Let me introduce you to the characters, and then we'll explore this very strange world. Hey, Doc! <laughs> yeah. The creatures of this world are known as word friends, and we have seven main word friends. Bear, sheep, pig, ant, dog, duck, and frog. Which strikes me as odd, because ant is a very small character. <laughs> no pun intended. But honestly, I feel like bug and shark show up even more than ant, but they're not in the main cast. Okay, sure, whatever. Bear loves painting sledding and seems to be the closest with sheep. She's very patient and goes with the flow. Next, we have sheep, who just exudes quirkiness. Like, Zoe Deschanel would play her in the live action version. But we'll give her makeup like in the style of the Cats movie. Oh my god, now I want to see that. Anyway, Sheep is a professional pretender. She loves wearing different outfits, putting on different voices, and performing. Oh, Sheep! Uh, uh, you mean, uh, rock star Sheep! Are you ready to rock? Uh, well, I mean, uh, that is, uh, if you like to, uh, um, rock. Pig is a chef and has his own cooking show. He also has a lot of trouble not immediately eating what he's created for his friends. Ant is his closest friend and cameraman, and Ant's main characteristic is... What Ant's known for is... Listen, he's friends with Pig, all right? He's also very casually jacked, lifting up characters up to five times his size. Dog is just one of those characters that lives with anthropomorphic talking creatures, but still acts like a normal, non-English speaking dog. He is great at writing, reading, and communicating with his friends despite the language barrier, but he definitely acts more like a pet, even though he is the richest. More on that later. Duck is very enthusiastic, at times childlike, and overall a very goofy guy. His best friend is Frog, who's the smart, level-headed one. He's the inventor of the group, and you know, there's something else about Frog, but I'm a little too scared to bring that up now. We'll get into it later. First, let's hop into this world. Bear! Hey, I didn't do it! As you can see, all the word friends are made up of letters spelling out the animal they are. Many objects and places are made up of words, too. Building words is a way of life and also a very entertaining pastime to them. When they solve the biggest issue of the episode by building a word, for that one, they'll do their special chant. It's time to build a word! Let's build it! Let's build it now! Can you imagine having a chant for something you do every day? It's time to feed my cats. It's time to get some gas. It's time to take a crap! So yes, they build words, and when when the word falls apart, it ceases to be until it's spelt out again. Even though in the second half of the very first episode, Happy Birthday Dog, they broke apart a cake and it remained cake. In the very same episode, I started catching on to the fact that intention matters a lot when building a word. They spelt out H A T to build a birthday hat for dog, but they didn't have to add any adjectives or describing words to specify what kind of hat they wanted. This point was driven home with the same object, no less, in season one, episode nine B. Sheep pretending to be a magician put together H-A-T and it turned into the perfect magician's hat. When those letters flew away in the wind and Pig got a hold of them, he put the H-A-T together and it formed a chef hat. Once again, those very letters escaped him and landed with Duck, and when Duck put H-A-T together, it ended up being those hats with the propellers that I've never seen in real life, but I, I really need one. So this further proves that intention is everything when building a word. Very convenient, but how far does this go? At what point do they have to specify? This is where things get a little funky. Season 1, episode 8B was the first instance of them combining two words to make a totally new word. This is when they took the letters night out of the sky and combined it with light for Bear to have a nightlight. Also, when they took the word night out of the sky, nothing changed. So those letters were purely for aesthetic reasons. The letters night didn't make anything because it was still night when they took the letters out of the sky. And going back to the whole intention thing, couldn't they have just ripped apart the word light and put it back together? Because in season one, 
episode 20B to make cans of different colored frosting, all Pig had to do was spell C-A-N for can, and there was frosting inside without ever having to specify that. Not only that, he kept putting together C-A-N, and different colors would appear in there too. But once again, because we can't make things too easy, season 3, episode 5, the very last episode of the series, they combined race with car to make a race car. They also did this with speedboat and motorbike too. Combining words is so occasional in the series, probably because it's the most complex lesson, but practicality-wise, why would you write out a describing word when you've never had to before? The actual letters as a material has absolutely zero rules. Season 1, episode 25B, they made fairy dust just by spelling out dust, and when it was sprinkled on sheep, it casually gave her wings and the ability to fly. The possibilities are endless. I don't want to see those letters get into the wrong hands, you know what I mean? One million subscribers! I'm so lucky, lucky. I'm the so letters are usually about yay big in comparison to the creatures, but when they form words, they transform into however big or small the object, element, or creature is. As I said, I so desperately try to look for patterns or rules with how these words work, how the letters work, and every single one I found was immediately discarded episodes later. In season 1, episode 2a, it seems as though writing words on paper or on a chalkboard doesn't actually conjure any change, so I assume they had to use the actual blocks for this magic to happen. But but then in the very next episode, writing on a chalkboard did cause the word to turn into an animated version of whatever they were writing out. Season 1, episode 15b, clouds in the shape of letters when combined turn into a cloud in the shape of whatever it's spelt. <laughs> it's a giraffe! <laughs> so while the blocks are the main source of power, anything in the shape of letters also have some sort of magical ability. My next question was, how do they get these blocks? In Season 1, Episode 14b, it's shown that they can get certain letters delivered to their house. So they build everything they need by ordering the letters instead of the object itself. So what about the objects that aren't letters? Where did they come from? Would you be surprised if I told you that even the non-lettered things are made up of letters? No letter chair, no letter vacuum, no letter table. Season 1, Episode 5b, Frog created a bubble by combining the letters together. But then when it was filtered through his bubble-making contraption, the bubble began to look like a regular non-wordy bubble. This alone would have been all the confirmation we needed. But then we saw the process of a word object turning into a non-word looking object again in Season 1, Episode 21b, when the word rope is spelled out. At first the rope took on the style of the scripty letters, but then collapsed into just regular schmegular looking rope. What happens with plural words? I'm so glad you asked. First seen in episode 6a of season 1, when they add an s at the end of a word to make it plural, it creates more and more of that object. This means they can quickly make an abundance of whatever they need, but will conveniently forget this or just straight up pretend it doesn't exist, so they can spell the same word over and over and over and over and over and over again. So even though we know you can have the same thing multiple times just by adding an s at the end of it, it's not used as much as you think. Probably because repetition is a great way for the kids to learn, so they rather just have you spell out the same word. Other than the preschool lessons they teach, which not to brag, but yeah, I do already know how to spell three letter words. Everything other than the spelling lessons are so out of this world, it's, it's hard to process. Process. For example, the dog is very casually rich as shit. While there is no currency in this world, when you take a look at their houses, all of them are living well. I'm not, I'm not judging, I'm not bringing classism into word world or anything. But the dog's house is huge and has a letter pit, which I can only assume is like a Scrooge McDuck coin pool situation. But instead of coins, it's a material that creates you, your friends, everything you eat, and everything you interact with. Wait a second. <laughs> Season 1, Episode 3b, we see a bird egg. We can assume it was made straight from the bird that's protecting it, and it also doesn't visibly look like letters, which tells us nothing based on everything else we saw. But anyway, the egg hatched, and out popped the letters B-I-R-D. The mom put it together, and then the baby bird was formed. Scary. What if I just wanted eggs to eat? Would it just be intention when I put together E-G-G -G and it would just be intention when I spell out omelette and we don't question where the where what I'm eating is coming from? Like, what what would I do? In the episode Rocket to the Moon, we meet Pig's nephews, which are made up of lowercase letters, much like the baby bird. So I'm guessing aging works lowercase to uppercase. Let's keep talking about this Rocket to the Moon episode before we move on with anatomy because it keeps getting weirder and weirder. So this is the first time we see their world from the sky. And it has two giant land masses in the shape of W's. What could that stand for? Willy Wonka? Walter White? 
Word world. All sorts of forced stakes in this episode. Frog's rocket fell apart because it wasn't put together well. But it's not like he misspelt it, and usually all they have to do is just push the letters together. So what could have went wrong? Okay, back to their bodies. I will never body shame you unless you're made up of letters that when disassembled render you unconscious or dead? They avoid answering that concerning question while shoving it in our face at the same time. Very first season, episode 2A, when Ant is tired of being small, they add a G-I at the beginning of him to make him a giant. This is the first and only time in the series where a character changed their physiology and modified their body. But then Ant wanted to be just Ant again. And I thought they would have to pull off the G and I in a sort of morbid beheading of sorts, but it just popped off of him. I played it frame by frame and there was a moment where his face disappears. In that moment, what are we looking at? This also makes me wonder how this is possible after something like that. Sometimes their letters will move into frame one at a time. I know this is a visual gag, but for the purposes of this video, how are they conscious while that happens? Are they only unconscious when not put together sometimes? Season 1, Episode 8A, Frog assembled his friend Bug. How does this work? Can you grab letters from anywhere and summon your friends? Or do their specific parts have to be lying around? And how would you even tell the difference at that point? We're looking for the remains of our friend Platypus. I found his pee-pee! This is a crime scene. Have some respect. Season 1, Episode 16B, Duck makes a goat. But the goat talks as if he's existed before? Constant reincarnation, perhaps? Season 2, episode 4b, Ant puts together the letters A-N-T to summon his cousins. With one of them even saying after he was put together, Thanks, cuz. Thanks, cuz. The thanks, cuz is what's bothering me about this scene, because was that Ant just waiting for somebody to give him consciousness again? And when he was summoned, he was immediately put to work because they had to get rid of all the peaches in the area because Pig is allergic to peaches. Wait, Pig is allergic to peaches? We've also seen instances of them getting sick, spraining ankles. So these ailments don't just go away if they were pulled apart and put back together again. We've also never seen any doctors or medicine in this world. The only thing that helps an ill word friend is rest. But what if something like super serious happens? What if one of their letters gets shattered or some shit? Well, to put it simply, that's impossible. If a word falls apart, you can just reassemble it. And I assume you could use other letter blocks. But also aside from that, these letter blocks are seen as very durable. I think there are impossible to break down unless they turn into food. So letters are magical building blocks with stored potential that cannot be harnessed until they are put in a word. That is the only basic truth of this universe that hasn't changed. <laughs> Season 3, episode 4b, the letter X announces itself like it's a Pokemon. This is the only letter that's done this. Why is it speaking? Why couldn't they give me one thing to hold on to? What? So instead of shuffleboard, they have shuffle word, where they slide letters towards each other and build words. And this is different than the other time they build words, because this time they're sliding letters together with sticks. Do they ever get bored of spelling? Season 3, episode 2a, they play hide and seek with a twist. The twist is that they have to build words together to hide behind. Their whole world revolves around words, which makes sense. They were never trying to hide this fact. The branding was very on the nose, but why are you gonna sing at me? It's a beautiful world. Don't lie. It's not. I am desperately trying to find a parallel to real life. What can I even compare this to? What are we just as obsessed with here on earth? Money? Power? I don't know. Season 1, episode 13a, they have a radio readathon where they read on the radio. Is that not just an audiobook? In the Christmas episode, they decorated the tree with letters, and to be honest, it looks like doo doo. What do they do when they're not spelling? Well, in season 3, episode 1b, they have a jelly picnic where they eat jelly sandwiches. Ew! Alright, never mind, stick to spelling. C A P Season 1, episode 5a, we see a group of non-wordy looking fish, and then we see Sheep's pet fish that is not smoothed out like the others. Did Sheep create her own pet fish? And is it ethical to create life just to keep them in the smallest bowl I've ever seen? Sheep, what are you doing? Season 1, episode 6b, we saw the sun and moon disassemble and reassemble as they set and rise. A really fun detail, I thought, but this changes constantly. Season 1, episode 8b, the sun set this way and the moon is nowhere to be seen. Where has she gone? 
Season 1, Episode 13b, Frog Made a Robot, but in Episode 15b, a nearly identical robot says he came from another planet, even though he and everything he owns is still made up of letters. I don't know, dude. How many planets could possibly be like this? Did they come from a word universe or something, too? Sketchy. Season 3, Episode 5a, we discover there's a whole planet of robots. But Frog still made the first one we've seen. Either Frog made a new species that soon multiplied and inhabited another planet, or, when he put together R-O-B-O-T, he actually summoned a robot from that existing place. The fact that there's this many robots at all in this show is very amusing. But somehow they fit in this world better than this monster. Dude, I hate the monster so much. And we haven't even gotten into the age inconsistencies yet. But stay tuned, stay tuned. And everyone loved Guts' story. Especially Frog. Halfway through the series, there's a shift, and all of a sudden they're putting out bangers left and right. The turning point for me was Season 1, Episode 22B, where the song was, dare I say, straight F-I-R-E. The sun is setting. It's time for getting back home before it's dark. Season 2, Episode 12A, Duck wore a tutu, and I was half expecting the other characters to be like, Duck, you're a boy, you can't do that. But they did it. They were nothing but supportive. Can't believe Word World would kill the anti-woke mob, and I have no choice but to stand officially. Now, I haven't addressed the unseen narrator yet, but this is very common in kids shows. Season 1, Episode 1B, the characters tell the narrator not to spoil the dog's birthday. And I got Word Girl deja vu because that's exactly what happened in that show. Who would have thought that Word Girl and Word World would have some similarities? And that only I, master of the most useless information, would be able to point it out. Tongue twister time. Word Girl World, Word World, when the world of words stopped whirling. Word Girl World, Word World, when the world of words stopped whirling. Screw you, script writing Athena. I nailed that. Season 1, episode 12A, there's a W drought. All the word friends are out of water because there are no Ws. And without Ws, all they're taking is L. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, wow, that's interesting that natural disasters can occur. But no, because at the end of the episode, Duck was actually at the source of all their water, just slapping the Ws off of the words. So there's nothing natural about this disaster. Duck is just a stupid, problematic idiot. Next episode, he starts a forest fire. That was a joke. But in episode 20b, Pig lectures Duck about littering, even stating we gotta keep Word World clean. It's the only world we got. Environmental message in Word World? Yes. But before we get to the most cursed part of the video, you gotta go down this really interesting rabbit hole with me. So as I was watching the show, it occurred to me, huh, what would the show look like in other languages? Are there new character designs? And I realized how much work that would be, but I wanted to check. So I went on the dubbing database, and according to this, there's actually 21 different languages that the show is dubbed in. The characters and words are left the same, as it's less a show about spelling and more a show about teaching kids English as a second language. Some notable things, in Malayalam and Tamil, the show is called Word Game. In Mandarin, the show title is ABC Hao Hao Wan, which translates to ABC Good Fun. The Hebrew version, unlike many of the other languages, actually recreated the logo. And according to Google Translate, this means the land of words. So I said the next part is the most cursed. What did I mean by that? Bouncing on the d -d -d <laughs> Guys, this came straight from my brain. I searched high and low on the internet for anybody to find any chemistry between these word friends, but I could not. I can't be the only one in the world to know about this. The frog's game is undeniable. This is purely a headcanon. And I threw up in my mouth a little when I said that because I should not be the first person to have headcanons about Word World. But I do, okay? I'm so brave for this. I assume they're all adults because they're all uppercase letters, except for Ant, but who gives a shit about him? Also in season three, episode three B, Duck and Bug are employed as firefighters from Frog. I thought the only two employed word friends were Cat as a teacher and Kangaroo as everything else. That's only a slight exaggeration. How is she a train conductor and a mail delivery person? But this point is further complicated by Sharks for sale school! Because A, I don't think school existed prior to this day. B, the cat, who is the teacher, is made up of lowercase letters, which I thought was our only indicator of age. And C, the students that are seen are the bugs, dog, duck, shark, and turtle. How old is Doc? Because half the time it seems like he's Frog's adopted son. And then the other half of the time, it seems like their peers casually doing this, things like this. That's lovey-dovey, am I out of my mind? Yep, I've been avoiding it for long enough, but Frog has chemistry with every character. Season one, episode 13A, Frog got tied up in his own tongue and he's asking his friends for help. They're all 
touching his tongue, dude. If you think about it for more than a second, it's kind of weird for friends to do. But, but I don't know, maybe I just have different boundaries. Stop SLUT shaming the word friends. So then as I was approaching the end of the series, I was starting to think the only character he didn't have chemistry with was she. <laughs> <clears throat> Where the fuck did that come from? This was season three, episode 3A, the third to last episode. Who would have thought, dude? The character with the worst design. Yes, I am gonna get on my soapbox about this. His mouth is shaped like the two lines in the letter F. But for whatever reason, they made his neck, like they, they, they did this, they, they made him look like this when they could have just made his mouth the same way and then it would have been an F. I don't know, the design's just silly to me. Anyway, maybe I'm just a terrible person for shipping the very platonic word friends. But Frog is out here bawling and I'm tired of us pretending he's not. On the website TV Tropes, they list a lot of the characters as heterosexual life partners. And I don't know, dude, that's weird to me. There's nothing that implies they're heterosexual. There's nothing that implies they're sexual other than the things I pointed out. <sighs> I'm the only one who's valid here, all right? They also list Bear as a tomboy. Is it just because she likes sledding and like sporty things sometimes because she's really not a tomboy at all. They also point out that Frog is an homage to, to the Kermit voice, which he for sure is, but I feel like some of these like animal type characters are limited in how similarly they could sound to the animal that they're voicing without being compared to other characters of the same animal. This leads me to my overarching theory about the world. Not only does the narrator talk, but there's a voiceover group of kids that answers the questions the characters ask, followed by the characters looking directly into the fourth wall and saying, right. Now, obviously this is to represent the viewer. It is very common for kids shows to include audience participation. This is seen in Dora. This is seen in Special Agent Oso. TV Tropes calls this fake interactivity. And I have to say, I actually prefer there being a voice for the viewers as opposed to an awkward, really stretched out pause. Did you subscribe yet? In season one, episode five, B, the narrator understands what Dog is telling him, but when Dog was having trouble expressing what he wanted to the other word friends, the narrator did not step in and help. He doesn't ever take an active role in the plot, or so it seems. I believe that maybe all the word friends are the narrator's toys. Whether they're sentient or he's the one giving them the voices, which actually isn't that far from the truth, it's clear he just wants to watch their story play out. And it's also clear that the word friends do things that don't necessarily make sense. Season two, episode seven B, Duck kept calling his sleepover a pajama party, despite them not wearing pajamas. Hmm. In the very last episode, season three, episode five B, sheep, bumped into us. <laughs> This particular fourth wall break is not only very out of nowhere, but feels very different from the other ones we've seen throughout the series. Because usually they talk to the narrator or the in-show audience of kids, which I know is supposed to represent us. But I don't know, that felt like she bumped into me personally. The whole toy thing was actually in our face the whole time because this series was made to sell toys. It's not a fun theory by any means, but I can't think of anything else that makes sense. Can you? As I was doing research about the cancellation, I stumbled across a YouTube video called My Reaction to Word World Got Cancelled in 2011. It shows Spongebob celebrating and the description reads, Yes, no more that stupid and annoying word show. Note, I love Spongebob Squarepants. I love the internet so much. But the end of Word World isn't as joyous as Move to another account would have you think. According to Reuters, WordWorld filed for bankruptcy and quote, WordWorld had liabilities of more than 10 million. So there you have it. So this would be the end of the video if I didn't make another silly song to close us out. I'm sorry, okay? Channel members got a first look at this song in our weekly live stream, which is always a fun, chaotic time. I need the eyeliner. I don't like that. It's how I perceive that shows the character of my being. That doesn't make fucking any sense. Also, access to these emojis? <laughs> yum yum, don't mind if I do. All right, self-promotion time over. It's time to jam. Learning how to S-P-E-L-L -L is easy when we all travel to hell. Rip apart your friends for the letters you need. We didn't think about it when we were only three. Money and power don't mean a thing in Word World. Word World. All we have to be scared of is reality bending magic. The sheep forces us to play pretend pig, eats all our food and says it's cause we're friends. When will this nightmare end? Wow, wow, whoopsie, Lauren, two weeks, let's go!